In this video, I'm going to run through how you can prove if a line is a diameter of a circle or if it isn't a diameter. So we're going to start with some big ideas. So fundamentally, not every single line is going to be a diameter. For example, A to B is a diameter, but C to D isn't. And the difference is that our diameter has to pass through the center of the circle. So A to B is a diameter, where C to D can't be the diameter because it's not passing through the center. So that is one condition. That's not sufficient. So must pass through the center is one criteria, and it also has to be the right length. So all of these lines pass through the center, but this one isn't a diameter because it's too short. This one's too long to be a diameter, even though it follows all of the diameter, it's too long. Whereas this one is just right. So that brings us to the two fundamental conditions that has to be satisfied for a line to be a diameter of a circle. So the line must, one, pass through the center. If it doesn't pass through the center, it's definitely not a diameter. And it also has to have length of 2r, where r is the radius. So if the length is exactly double the radius, it's the right size but it's also got to pass through the center in order to be a diameter. So if you can prove those two things, you have proved that your circle is a diameter. If you prove either of these wrong, then it can't be a diameter. So let's look at a worked example. So we're going to prove that a line that is joining these two points is a diameter of the circle with this equation here. So we need to start with our first condition. So condition one is that it has to pass through the center. And we need to find the center of this circle. And the way that you do that is you think about this bracket. I need to make this bracket become zero. So we can do that by putting x equals one. So that's one of our coordinates. And then we need to make this bracket zero. And we can do that by making y equals one. So that gives us a center with x and y coordinates of one and one. Because one and one substituted into there is going to give you zero. The next step is to think about your equation of your line. And lines have the equation y equals mx plus c, where m is your gradient and c is your y-intercept. So we need to first find the gradient of the line. We do that with a simple gradient formula. So you're doing y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. This is your x1 and y1. This is your x2 and y2. And so you can find the gradient by just finding the change in the, the slope, or rather the slope. So what you now need to do is substitute that m into that equation. So we get the equation is y equals minus x plus c. We don't know what the value of c is, so we need to substitute one of these points in and rearrange to get a value of c. I'm going to choose this point here. So we've got a y value of 3 and an x value of minus 1. I can substitute that in here, replacing y with 3 and replacing x with minus 1, which is what that point says. So I'm just doing that there. So we get 3 equals minus minus 1, so that's going to become a plus 1, and then we can just rearrange that and we get that c equals 2. So we now actually have the equation of the line. We have our value of m here, we have our value of c here. We can substitute that in there, and so we've now got the equation of the line is y equals minus x plus 2. We say that the center of the circle is 1, 1, and we don't know whether this is on the line or not. So we need to take the center of the circle and substitute it in there. So we're going to check 1, 1, this point, which is our center in this equation. So we do the substitution, and we find that 1 equals minus 1 plus 2. Well, that's obviously correct. So therefore, we have satisfied condition 1. We now need to check, does this line have length 2r? So the second condition is that it's got length of 2r. So we need to find what the radius r is. And so the way that the circle equation works is that this is your r squared. So this number here is r squared, so we can say that r squared equals 8. And then if we square root both sides, we find that r equals 2 root 2. Because remember, root 8 is the same as root 4 times root 2. Root 4 is, of course, 2, so you end up with 2 root 2. We now need to find the distance between our point 1 and our point 2. And we use the distance formula. So if this is, again, x1, this is y1, this is x2, and this is y2. We can substitute that into this equation. So I'm just going to do the substitution there, simply replacing each one. So our x2 is going to be minus 1. Our x1 is 3. So replace that, put the squared in. We've got y2 is going to be a second y value, which is 3. So replace that there. Our y1 value is going to be minus 1. So replace that there. If we tidy this up, we get this bracket becoming minus 4, this bracket becoming plus 4. Simplify that down, 
That's going to, of course, add up to 32. So we've got root 32. 4 times 8 is 32. Root 4 times root 8 gives us 4 root 2. So we're getting 4 root 2 is the distance between this point and this point. And our radius was 2 root 2. Double the radius, you get the distance. So our second condition is satisfied. And so because we've satisfied the two conditions, that it passes through the center and it's got a length of 2r, we have proved that these two points form a line and that line is a diameter of this circle. So that is how you prove that a line is a diameter of a circle. I hope this video has been helpful to you and thank you very much for watching.